Welcome to Islamophobia for Dummies. The step-by-step -step guide to seeing how ridiculous Islamophobia really is. Today's episode is inspired by the satire article, Are Americans Ready for Democracy? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The uprisings in the Middle East have been handled by many in the Western media with a lot of bigotry against Muslims and Arabs, with many fears being raised about whether we can be trusted to elect our own leaders. To demonstrate how prejudiced this is, today we'll be covering the recent protests in America in a satirical way. And just as the Western media are usually oblivious about Islamic culture and Arabic words to make us seem alien, in this video we will be oblivious about American culture and English words. As the wave of popular uprising spreads all over the Middle West, it's anarchy in America. With chaos across the country, from Wisconsin to Indiana, Illinois, Ohio to Idaho. And while it's true that violence and riots are quite common in America, like any time their favorite sports team loses, and more often to celebrate when their favorite team wins, but this time we have to pay attention because the protesters want to topple the U.S. regime. Many American protesters are actually invoking the Arab revolutions, comparing their governors to Mubarak and Qaddafi in their cries for help against their own government. And while many Muslims are showing solidarity for the plight of the American people, many are questioning how can we be sure that the next American regime won't be even worse. Don't get me wrong, I've always felt sorry for the plight of the American people. I mean, their legal system is so unfair that they actually consider justice to be blind? And can you imagine that they don't even have Sharia courts, Jewish courts, or even Christian courts? That is so unfair to Christians and Jews who were given this basic religious right in the Islamic nation 1400 years ago. Instead, their judicial system is clearly based on white supremacy it's even called the Supreme Court. I mean, their constitution denied women and slaves the rights of people, and now their Supreme Court considers white-owned companies to be people. So this law is going to take the most corrupt political system in the world and make it that much easier for U.S. companies to buy elections to serve their own corrupt interests. And while American companies are given the same rights as people, these corporations manipulate the laws so that the wealthy can avoid paying taxes and they aren't even held liable for breaking the law even when they cause the most corrupt financial collapse in history. So now, not only is the U.S. economy in crisis, but those poor Americans are forced to pay 35% of their income as taxes? I mean, the most that Christians and Jews ever paid for Islamic social welfare and national security was 5% of retained wealth, which also included a money-back guarantee, like when Khalid ibn Walid paid back this jizya tax to non-Muslims when he could no longer protect them. In terms of education, they have the lowest ranking of all developed countries in math, science, and high school graduation. And it's really no wonder they don't even send their kids to normal madrasas. Instead, they're called schools, which in their language means group. And this group mentality is a clear method for conditioning obedience of American children. From a young age, Americans are indoctrinated with the Pledge of Allegiance, where they're forced to swear their subservience to the dominant regime. And that's especially humiliating to those people they've conquered. Also taught in these radical schools is the National Anthem, which is more like an indoctrination to terrorism, where the goal is to conquer with no mercy. And in the third hateful verse... The enemy's blood is used to wash out their foul footsteps. 
and offers no refuge from the terror of flight and the gloom of the grave. And the worst part is that American children are brainwashed to make war and conquer in God's name. So basically, these radical schools teach children that these violent verses abrogate and cancel any peaceful verses from the U.S. Constitution. After that, their adolescents are encouraged to consume large quantities of alcohol and drugs in their aptly named high schools. And when they move on to college... Their daughters are trained to fall victim of promiscuity with unfaithful men in order to prepare them to work under their heads of state or if they end up marrying a politician. And the state of American civil liberties is appalling. What's the point of claiming to give freedom of speech when their privately owned media companies do little more than promote their respective religious or secular ideologies? But in combination with the U.S. Patriot Act, stripping away the right to privacy, there is a silver lining. At least no one can hate Americans for their freedoms since they just lost them all. And the hypocrisy of their leaders is unbelievable. They always say one thing to get elected and do the exact opposite when they gain power. So in the American version of the Shia Taqiyya, their leaders are encouraged to lie without even being under direct threat of harm. The real problem here is that democracy doesn't mean the same to American politicians as it does to the rest of the world. Both the Republican and Democrat ideologies deceive the American people with rhetoric about freedom and democracy with the end goal of oppressing the American people to retain power. Even fundamentalist Americans can't argue with that. After all, Democrats are utterly ashamed by the election of George Bush, twice, and Republicans hate the election of Barack Obama so much that they're forced to contradict themselves in order to disagree with him. Here's a Republican criticizing Obama before the Libyan no-fly zone. What would you do about Libya? Uh, exercise a no-fly zone this evening provided help to the uh, rebels to replace him. The, uh, I mean, the idea that we're confused about a man who has been an anti-American dictator since 1969 uh, just tells you how uh, inept this administration is. The United States doesn't need anybody's permission. We don't need to have NATO. We don't need to have the United Nations. And here he is after the no-fly zone. I would not have intervened. I think there were a lot of other ways to affect Gaddafi. I think there are a lot of allies in the region that we could have worked with. I would not have used American and European forces. Clearly, there's no way to ensure a good outcome from democracy in America. And even though the American media doesn't realize it, but they agree with us completely. For example... For the many people who say that the point is free elections, they should be reminded that the point is a good outcome. Elections are merely a means to a good outcome. But when you talk about democracy, let's look at democracy. Uh, Germany had democracy and voted in Hitler. So now we apply Fox News's own logic to the United States government. We shouldn't support American democratic elections because there's no way to guarantee a good outcome for the rest of the world. Because the U.S. government isn't only oppressing its own people, but recent U.S. foreign policy is one of the most militant and brutal in history, and especially against Muslims. So what's the point of these Western so-called democracies when they result in wacko, anti-Palestinian, anti-Muslim repressive governments causing the deaths of hundreds of thousands of Muslim civilians in Palestine, Afghanistan, and Iraq? Some misguided Muslims blame the American people themselves for the atrocities of the U.S. government. This is similar to some arguments presented by Fox News. Democracy. Democracy. What does that mean? Nothing. Nothing. It depends on who the people are that are voting. But since the vast majority of Americans don't even vote... Muslims can't blame all Americans for electing leaders that turn out to be violent radicals. 
And even though Muslims have every right to be angry at what the American government's doing to our Muslim brothers, we still can't blame all Americans. The Quran says, O you who believe, be steadfast witnesses for Allah in equity, and let not hatred of any people make you deviate and deal unjustly. But it is true that the American Revolution was a bloodbath compared to the peaceful Egyptian and Tunisian revolutions. But that's only because America is a very young country. How can you expect Americans to evolve socially in a mere 200 years to the same level as the ancient civilizations in Europe and Asia? And while Islam does teach us to be united as Muslims above all else, Americans are still divided by their tribal and ideological lines. You have the Roman Catholic against the Southern Baptist, the conservative Republican against the liberal Democrat. That's why many people believe that their recent barbaric civil war is still being fought today. For example, in a recent poll, 46% of Mississippi Republicans want to ban interracial marriage. That explains why political opponents are very often assassinated through honor killings. So are Americans ready for democracy? Fox News believes that not all people are blessed with an innate genetic subconscious that equate freedom and democracy. And while I think all people in the world deserve to be free, I'm not sure everyone in the world is ready for democracy. So while white supremacists believe that American genetics have become inferior due to interracial marriage, but that is not an Islamic concept. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, There is no superiority of an Arab over a non-Arab, or a non-Arab over an Arab, nor of a red person over a black, or a black person over a red, except by piety. Therefore, we can't blame American genetics for anything. You see, the real danger is from the U.S. government's radical form of democracy, because their ideology tries to ensure American freedoms at the expense of everyone else's. The world can no longer allow American leaders to use their constitution to justify terrorist invasions and imperial occupations. But we have to find a way to ensure global peace without imposing our own puppet government on the Americans. I recommend that we abolish the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and replace it with the Department of Everyone Else's Homeland Security so we can protect the homeland of all non-Americans. And we definitely need to ban the practice of American law which is the U.S.'s own barbaric form of Islamic Sharia. Finally, we should enforce the new French law on Americans to find people whose clothing represents female subjugation, like the bikini, because you'd surely have to force people to wear them. These tools are essential to stopping Americanization everywhere in the world and putting an end to this hateful, radical, Americanist fundamentalism. We sincerely hope you enjoyed this episode of Islamophobia for Dummies, and we hope to see you again next time.